Hello, everybody. This is uh, Chaplain Bob. There's been some interesting developments uh, going on. Canada has activated hoarding teams. Seems like if you have too much food or too many supplies that they come and they're going to take them. Well, guess what? There was... In Russia, well, I should say Ukraine, prior, uh, let's see, after World War I, the Ukraine, which is the breadbasket of Europe, I mean, they grow, it's like our uh, Nebraska and Oklahoma, Nebraska, and I'm trying to think of the other state that's next to Nebraska, but... Uh, you know, they grow the plains. They grow all our wheat and corn and what have you. Well, that's what Ukraine is for Europe. And when the communists, I'm going to quit using the um, a certain word because I think they're going to start uh, banning videos based on certain words. This word rhymes with news. N-E-W-S, but it starts with a J, if you catch my drift. From henceforth, if I remember, I'm just going to start calling them the tribe. You know, children of Canaan, Cain, perhaps. So I'm going to start calling them the tribe. Well, communism was very kosher from the very beginning in Russia. And what they did was they basically went in, had troops go in and steal all the food from the farmers. I mean, can you imagine farmers who grew crops died of starvation because they took their food? And of course, they shot some of them. And some of them, they, uh, in the middle of winter, uh, they kicked them out of their house. You know, with if you were wearing pajamas, that's what you went out with. They wouldn't even let them take a coat. And uh, a quarter, approximately a quarter of the population of Ukraine died from this stuff. A lot of it young children. I mean, let's face it. Uh, if you're a young child growing, you can't go without food. You know, if you're old fat guy like me well I'm not real fat but you know you could go 30 days without a meal but a growing child they can't they don't have any reserves to pull upon so the um, a lot of them died matter of fact when Hitler invaded uh, Russia and Ukraine um, a lot of the Ukrainians thought of the Nazi, well, the Germans as uh, liberators from getting rid of the uh, Russians. But the thing was, Hitler, uh, he's one of the serpent seed. He uh, unleashed the Gestapo on them. And the people are like, oh, great. So we traded Stalin for Hitler. I mean, that's like you, you trade one of Hitler's I mean, I'm sorry, you, you trade one of uh, Satan's generals for another general. I mean, you know, there's, they still both work for the same devil. Uh, let's see. All right, there's a, a thing called Holodomor. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I don't speak Ukrainian. But it's spelled H-O-L-O-D-O-M-O-R. It was the forced famine in Ukraine, and it was actually genocide, and it happened in 1932 and 1933. So, you know, Canada is uh, starting to have teams, SWAT teams, armed to the teeth. Of course, they don't want Canadians to have guns. But they're going to go in with uh, government SWAT teams with guns and take people's supplies at gunpoint. 
And I suppose if you resist them, they'll just kill you, you know, all in the name of freedom, of course. Uh, New Zealand, that uh, that uh, so-called mask shooting at the mosque. Well, you know what? Uh, Facebook, fake book, and uh, YouTube uh, have been deleting all the videos because people copy the videos and they start looking at it. And it looks like computer-generated imaging. I mean, the cartridges were coming out of the the rifle and they were disappearing in midair. Plus, you know, when you shoot somebody, and, and everybody, if you don't know it, talk to a combat veteran, okay? When you shoot somebody, there's not just red that appears on their shirt. I mean, there's blood splatter on the wall behind them. Well, there wasn't that in these videos. I mean, you know, it's gruesome. And um, Bright Eon, which uh, I'm on for now, they were told by all the internet providers, you will delete all those videos that you have on the so-called New Zealand mosque shooting, or we will not allow people to look at your website. So he had, well, he removed them. Now, that's the thing. Uh, when you go to MSN, the Microsoft Network, and you type in Brighteon, it doesn't even come up. I mean, you know, you're talking Yahoo, uh, Google. You know, I, I'm on Google+. Plus or they're getting rid of it in a few weeks. But I, I put posts there with links to stuff. I come back five minutes later, my post is gone. Of course, the half-naked women that get posted on uh, Bible study for people to go to their porn sites, uh, that's still there. That was there before I made my post. And it's there after they remove my post. So, you know, and a lot of those were Bible studies that I post. So I'm lucky if they stay up. Well, you know, I'm using the, the world's terms. Lucky. I'm lucky if they stay up for my posts, stay up for five minutes. I mean, they delete them that fast. So, you know, uh, the censorship is worldwide. And I don't know how long um, I'm going to be on YouTube, but those of you that know uh, Rob Lee, Rob Servant of Jesus, if you look him up, um, I wish everybody would help him uh, get his website up, if it happens, if it's the Lord's will, because um, I just don't see us having a future on any of these platforms. I really don't. I thought Bright Eon was going to turn out to be something good. Well, I was wrong. Um, so they're going to delete a bunch of my videos, and I appreciate all the help, everybody. Uh, so it's uh, censorship. I knew it was coming years ago. I did a video on it. I've, you know, sometimes the Lord, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm, uh, I like to research things and look things, or maybe the Lord reveals things to me. I don't know. It may be both. But uh, I've known censorship has been coming for a while. And, uh, you know, New Zealand just passed a law. Uh, all military-style weapons are now illegal. Of course, the, the, the thugs that work for the government, they can have them. But, um, you know, they, uh, when they come in the middle of the night to do what to us what they did in Ukraine, starve people kick them off their land. Um, they don't want you to have the ability to fight back. But that uh, that New Zealand shooting thing, that looked fake. I mean, it looked like a Hollywood, a, 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 a grade B movie Hollywood production. So, I, I just, you know, 
it's just it's it's getting it's getting real people it's getting real people are starting to wake up of who's behind all this stuff so the um, the tribe they're starting to take some drastic measures you know people think that uh, we're gonna win well yeah we win in the end when Christ returns but it's gonna be a bu rough bumpy ride till we get there you know I used to really fear persecution when I found out about it. I mean, I, I've known about the, uh, the wicked people's stuff since the 80s. I mean, let's face it. I, I was watching Oliver North. Um, for those of you that don't remember that, that was the uh, Iran-Contra thing. Um, look it up. Back in the 80s, Ronald Reagan was president, Ollie North. I watched him on C-SPAN live during the congressional hearings and a senator uh, asked him what he did with um, the money that he traded the Contras for the guns and he says well senator we we didn't uh, uh, trade the uh, Contras uh, money for guns you know and he's stammering and kind of beating around the bush and then finally you know the senator goes look I know you didn't give those guns to those people. You know, what did you do? You know, you didn't give it to them for free. So he finally stammers and beats around the bush and he gets around to it. Well, Senator, they, um, we, um, what we did was uh, we uh, traded them the guns for cocaine. And then uh, finally he admitted, yeah, we traded the guns for cocaine and we sold the cocaine on the world market. Well, people, what country is the world market for cocaine? I'll guarantee you the United States buys the great majority of cocaine. So in other words, Ollie North admitted to being a coke dealer. And I was watching this. It was like, I don't know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the afternoon around 1.30, 2 o'clock, somewhere around there. I'm getting ready to go to work. I worked in the afternoon. And I watched this live on TV on C-SPAN, congressional hearings. And I thought, oh my, I wasn't a believer then. But I watched this, he's in a room full of reporters. And I thought, wow, Reagan is toast. He's gonna be, you know, thrown out of office, drug dealer. Well, guess what? I waited a couple days, there was nothing in the news, nothing in the newspapers, nothing in the radio, nothing on TV. I mean, you had ABC, CBS, NBC, all in that room with cameras, recording live. Nothing came out in the news. Nothing. And I mean, I waited up to a week or two. And finally, I realized these people are all in on it. I realized then how controlled our media was. I mean... You're talking a, a huge hall in Congress. It probably had over a hundred and something people. There was probably, you know, a couple dozen news people in there. And there wasn't a word in the media. That's when I realized how controlled everything was. And then I started doing investigations. You know, I went to college. Uh, I remember my professor said, if you don't learn anything else in college, you will learn how to do research. And he was right. That was I learned how to do research. I actually went to the uh, library and started looking up who the board of directors were of the media. I started seeing the same names over and over and over. You know, the guys that worked for ABC were on NBC. The guys that worked for NBC worked for CBS. And, uh, you know, C as in vision, S-E-E. -E. So when you want to see BS, just turn on CBS. And, um, you know, it was all the same people. And then I traced them back. Insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies. Oh, yeah, take your vaccinations. Yeah. And Facebook and YouTube's deleting the, the, those videos also. 
the ones that warn you that there's mercury, mercury in the vaccines. Look up autism symptoms and look up mercury poisoning symptoms and tell me they're different. They're not. Uh, they own the banks. They own the media, the banks, uh, the pharmaceutical. They've been buying up the food companies, Archer Daniel Midland. Uh, what's the other big one? Uh, you know, they, they bought up all these food companies, and, and, I mean, they control everything. And my next video is going to be on how did they gain control. But uh, let me tell you something. Now, girls, uh, gals, you know, you're not so much into sports like, you know, guys are. But when you're, uh, when you when you're playing in sports and you have a game plan and you're winning all the time, you don't change nothing. And that's what Satan and his children do. Their plan works and they're not going to change it. But the thing is, is they're going to have to tighten the screws soon because they have to do this because people are starting to wake up. I mean, I've been reading comments on people that expose this stuff. And it's not just people that don't believe in Jesus that are waking up. I mean, Christians are starting to wake up. But the thing is, because they control the media, uh, they won't let us get together. So... Uh, if you want to, you know, you should consider helping Rob Lee, Rob Servant of Jesus on YouTube, and um, see if we can help him get a website up, because they're just going to delete us. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm surprised I'm still on YouTube. I really am. I'm shocked. But uh, I don't have that many followers. You know, when you start having 50,000 followers, they get rid of you. I've only got, I don't know, five, 6,000 people that are subscribed to me. And I only have maybe 50 or 50 people that actually, I don't know, maybe 100. You know, a lot of people don't comment. But, uh, you know, if I was popular, like some of these big names, I'd be gone. So they're, they're getting rid of us. So, you know, persecution, people, it's going to wake up the church. And honestly, I'm looking forward to all these so-called Christian Zionists either having their heads on the chopping block and being told, you will deny Jesus or you will die for him at the hands of the tribe. You know, the people that they supported. I'm looking forward to that happening to them. And they're going to make a choice. They can deny Jesus to save their skin. Or they can die for the faith. Oh, wait a minute. We're not going to die for the faith because... God's not a wife beater and 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 the pre-trib rapture. Oh yeah, we're going to be flying out of here any second. Uh I don't think so. Persecution is going to bring revival to the remnant church. You know, in Matthew 10:33, Jesus said, "But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father." which is in heaven. And I've seen what looks like scans, scanned images of guillotine uh, invoices. Oh, that was a bunch of years ago. There was somebody who made a YouTube video that there was a, a, a FEMA or whoever had bought guillotines into the United States. I mean, a bunch of them. I mean, like 30,000 or so, thousands of them. And they had an invoice, and it was some company in France. And, of course, France was the one that uh, did the, um, the guillotine. And, uh, you know, the French Revolution was, uh, yeah, 
the tribe. They were behind it. They, they try to tell you no, but, you know, they, they always blame it on the Vatican, the Catholic Church. Uh, the Catholic Church was infiltrated by the tribe a long time ago. So, you know, persecution is going to wake up the remnant church. There's going to be a revival. So, actually, it's going to be a good thing because, you know, the lukewarm church just isn't going to cut it. All right, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, I'm going to spit you out. I guess the Bob translation would be, uh, I'm going to chew you up and spit you out. Well, I don't know about the Bob translation, but that, yeah, you get the idea. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Doesn't that sound like the, um, the TBN network, what they preach? Oh, yeah. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Repent of what? Some people will tell you that when they talk, when God talks to about uh, people repenting, they're talking about repenting of their unbelief. Well, this is Christ talking to a church. So what, what is this church supposed to repent of? Their unbelief? Uh, so a, 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 church that, a church has to repent of their unbelief. Oh, okay. No. God's telling them to repent of their wicked works. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh. Overcometh from what? What's coming? The persecution. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Remember, he said, uh, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. We just read that, right? Hebrews 12, 8. But if ye be without chastisement, that's a whipping. But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Are you a son or a daughter? Well, if you're not getting whipped for bad behavior, well, guess what? You're not you're not of his. All right, so what does it mean to overcome? Jesus said we had to overcome. Well, in John 16:33, these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. Yeah, to have peace we have to be in Christ. All right. Uh, Jesus says, In the world ye shall have tribulation. What is tribulation? Trouble, persecution, problems. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. 
But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Romans 3, 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. How are we justified in our sayings? Simple. Christ is king. What we, what we say, you know, uh, Christ said that if you deny him before men, that he would deny you before the angels in heaven. In uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed or accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So, when the um, so-called church-going Zionists find out that they're going to have to die for their faith, remember, I hope they remember these words, Matthew 10, 32. Oh, that's right, they don't read the Bible. They just listen to people like John Hagee. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7. Jesus speaking, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few, few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Television's full of them, people. Ye shall know them by their fruits. In other words, you'll know them by their works. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. You see, people, we need to produce good fruit. I know there's people that'll say, oh, well, if, if you do good things, you're, you're trying to earn your salvation. Well, you know what? Let them argue with Jesus. Because every tree that bringeth not good fruit is cut down and going to be cast into the fire, the fires of hell. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Haven't you ever heard people say, Oh, all you got to do is just believe, just believe in the Jesus and, and ask the Lord into your heart, and you're saved. That's it. That's all you got to do. But that's not what Jesus says. He says, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Well, if we have to do the will of the Father, maybe we need to find out what the will of the Father is. Okay, verse 24. I'm sorry, verse 22. Many will say to me in that door day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? 
and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Probably the scariest words you'll ever, somebody would ever hear in their life from the mouth of Jesus, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Wow. Think about that. So, let's see. All right, 1 John 2.13, overcoming. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And who's from the beginning? Christ. I write unto you, young, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. 1 John 4.4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 5.4, for, for whosoever is born of God, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Revelation 2.7 He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 2.11, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Revelation 2.16, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He that, uh, Revelation 3.5, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Do you know God blots people's names out of the book of life? Evidently, it's like uh, writing in pencil. And they turn on the eraser and erase the name. Boy, you don't hear that. In, among the eternal security crowd, do you? He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Verse chapter 3, 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, not that filthy cesspool. Sorry about that. But it's not that filthy city in the Middle East that practices Kabbalah. You know, New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven for my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Revelation 3.21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my Father in his throne. Wow. Revelation 11.7, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. See, people, some have to die for their faith. 
Revelation 13, 7, And it was given unto them to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Wow. Revelation 17, 4, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Revelation 21, 17, I'm sorry, 21, 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. All right, people, that's, that's it. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, Chaplain Bob signing off.